I still remember my first class in textiles and my, my, my faculty, she started with this one line. She said, the moment you're born, you're wrapped in a piece of cloth. And the moment you die, you're again wrapped in a piece of cloth. And this one statement was, was so impactful because it spoke about the relationship that we have with textiles. And it's these textiles that make the clothes that we wear. And it's these clothes that form fashion. And with such an influence on our lives, fashion is not something that should be treated like a criminal, but fashion has the power to empower. And that's the reason I feel that fashion and love should come on the same platter. So yes, I am Srijit Jeevan, uh, and I describe myself as a designer driven by love. Love for clothes, love for the people whom it influences, and love for stories. But besides that, who am I? I am basically a Malayali boy who went off to study textiles and fashion, first at NID Ahmedabad and then at Ensad in Paris. Uh, and I was fortunate to have been able to work with some of the best labels and designers in the country. But why exactly am I flaunting my biodata here? Because what I'm going to speak about today are a few events that happened in my life in the past 10 to 15 years, which today makes me a designer who wants to create clothes with love, who wants to create fashion that is timeless and touches people. Once I was at this factory with a non-Indian friend of mine, and we were working there when the owner of the factory came to us and uh, he was telling this friend about how he had sent his son to study textiles abroad. And while we said that was great, in the evening when we got back into the car after the work, the first thing this friend of mine told me was about how she thought it was the joke of the century that this man had sent his son to study textiles abroad. And I was shocked, but the fact was that we live in a country where we have a huge heritage and history of textiles. Not only do we have a huge history of textiles, we also have a culture of textiles, which our generation does not seem to know much about. But once I was sitting with my grandfather and he happened to look at uh, the munda or the dhoti that we had gifted him, and he said, but this has a one inch border and he was too shy to wear it. And there I was sitting there as a textile designer trying to decode minimalism not understanding that this was so intrinsic to our textile culture and that we have a culture of textiles which talks about it. And as I started sort of collecting the Munda as I grew up, I figured that it was not just a product, but it was also a such, it was also a rich treasure of, of skill, of metaphor and of meaning. And we are a country which, which used textiles as, as a tool to fight for our independence. And of course, it wasn't just textiles, we also used salt, right? So we used food, which is what brings me to the next story of what happened. I, was, I happened to see this Malayala movie which spoke of how food made with love is food of superior character. And somebody like me who loves clothes as much as I love, as much as I love food, even though I don't look it, uh, I, was, I was able to make that connection. Just as the food that we grow up eating is what becomes soul food to us. I'm sure all, a lot of you being in hostels, you know what, what soul food is. And just as, so just as food, our clothes are also a part of our experience. It's, it's what we've done in life that sort of makes us want to dress uh, the way we do. That's how I decide to create something that is local, that's something I've grown up with, but for a larger, for a global audience. And that's how I ended up in Kerala to start a label, uh, the name of which I had absolutely no idea about at that time, but I sat with a Malayalam dictionary for almost a month and came across the word Rauka, which uh, was in a way one of the first constructed garments that people wore in Kerala, because till then all of it was draped. But as I did more research on the word, I also found that in another language, Rauka also means a corridor, which is metaphoric of what I wanted to do as a designer, which was to connect the people who make the clothes and wear the clothes. Because we are a corridor, right? And that's when our work becomes more meaningful. 
So we decided to be a brand that wanted to, wanted to create a new dal or a new sambar, but for, for a modern audience. So our stories were always about things that I saw every day, things that were local. And one of the main reasons why I love local stories is because once I happened to show my portfolio to uh, a faculty, she was French. So she's, she saw it and she told me, I absolutely love your work, but I'm equally disappointed at the same time. And the reason she said that was because she said it said nothing about who you are and where you come from and what you grew up with. So that's how I started saying local stories because that's something I know. And if, for instance, if I was to host a dinner to the world, I would rather serve Malayali food than try and serve a mediocre meal, which is, say, Thai. Let me show you a small video, which is a fashion film uh, made by Anuda Kunath, who's also my wife, about how my process is. <laughs> collection that came out after a short trip that I made to a small town of flower stringers. And the fact that a simple handmade garland is much more superior than say a bouquet is what inspired me to do a collection. We all go and bargain for that one small garland, right? Without knowing the amount of work that goes into something that's handmade. This was metaphoric of what was happening to craftsmen in our country. So the process, what you saw in the film is rather obvious because we use details of the stringing and the imagery and, and the whole vibe of the small town into the collection. But when we put this collection on the ramp for the Lakme Fashion Week, we decided to cover the heads of all the models with flower baskets, which is sort of metaphoric of the idea that the craftsmen are still hidden behind the weight of their own baskets. And these are the stories that I feel fashion should talk about because fashion is aspirational and when fashion talks about things, there are people who will sit up and listen. And I would love my runways to, to communicate something than just be a backdrop for pretty clothes. Let me talk of another story which started on my Facebook page. So I wanted to talk about Kochi a lot more. I wanted to talk about Kerala a lot more. So I put out a status asking for people, asking people what they felt uh, was the feeling of coming home. And while I thought a lot of people would talk about, say, Kathakali and snakeboard races and the touristy aspects of Kerala, what was interesting was a more local, more intimate sort of experience. People said they would love to climb a tree, they would love to just come here and do nothing. So this was an interesting story that I wanted to sort of uh, make into a collection that would be like a local cooked meal. So I was looking for local ingredients that could help me put this collection together. So, I personally love embroidery as a technique because I feel it's, it's environment friendly. So I gave an ad for people, as in gave an ad asking for embroiders. And what surprised me that day was I got around 80 to 100 calls from women who basically could not go out and work, but they wished to work from their homes. And that was an amazing skill for me to use because it was, it was something that was not categorized as organized labor or skill. And on the other side, we were also sitting on a large number of handloom weavers in the, in the state who uh, in a lot of ways sometimes are lost because they don't know how to go beyond the festive market or because of the competition from power loom and other uh, problems such as that. So I decided to do a collection of, which was inspired by Kerala but made with local ingredients which 
I called Coming Home. So the I and what and we put this out uh, in Fort Cochin. And uh, what made me really happy was the fact that there were a lot of people who bought these products and wrote to me and said that finally they had something that was entirely made in Kerala, which they could take back as a memory, but also live with. Another story starts in uh, in a remote co corner of Munar, where uh, mobile networks don't work, but people do. Yes, I'm talking about Aranya Natural, which is uh, an initiative of Shrishti. Uh, it started as a natural dyeing unit, mainly to uh, empower and employ differently abled uh, people who, who were living in Munar. But what they've managed to create over time is that they've been able to create an ecosystem for, uh, for Shibori artists who have now become such amazing textile artists. These are the instances when I really feel that we become a corridor as, as a designer, like I was initially talking about, where design could be the tool to elevate artisans such as them to, to, to upscale the whole value of the product. We did a collection called Into the Lotus Pond, which was sort of metaphoric of the place, where, which was really sort of silent, calm, but at the same time, they were, they were coming out with such beautiful uh, work. We worked with natural dyeing, we worked with text, uh, techniques such as shibori, uh, with clam dyeing, with, uh, with a lot of silk fabrics and created a collection uh, which was suggested uh, by the Lakme Fashion Week and Paramparik Karigar to, to be put on the runways of the Lakme Fashion Week. What, so what really uh, makes our work meaningful is that we're able to able to bridge that gap and put together something which started off for a, for a purpose to into, into some of the best stores in the country. And, uh, and that's what we find joy in. There's one last story that I'd love to share today, which is uh, my association with the Silai project. So what is the Silai initiative? Silai initiative is, is something that Usha International has been working on. So the idea is that they go to the rural areas and train women with basic sewing techniques so that they can self-empower them with, uh, in their own ways. So a lot of them start uh, their own tailoring shops. And uh, so I chose to work with the Pondicherry cluster. So uh, IMG Reliance and Usha together had initiated this uh, conversation with us so that we could develop a collection to, uh, which could be showcased at the Fashion Week. So what was interesting is when we went there, f some of the women were, were earning around 5,000 rupees a month, but there were also some who had in turn trained other women and, and they were also uh, earning around say 30 to 40,000 rupees a month. But what they were looking at us, uh, looking up to us for was a larger market because they felt that there was a limitation to what they could do in their own uh, rural areas. But as a designer, personally, we are always on the lookout for skill. And this is where we felt the concept of reimagined fashion could be something that could uh, come in handy, where we say, could the rural uh, production feed an urban market, just as how food is, in a way. So we, we had to prepare them for fashion, and that meant that it came with its own baggage. So we start, the first thing we asked them was, have you ever gone to a store? And they said, we're really scared to even walk into a store because there's every chance they're going to throw us out. But that's where we began. We took them to stores. We, we taught them that if they chose to sharpen their skills, we could make a product that could create more value. We taught them to be part of a design process. We taught them what it means to be wearing fashion, what it... Uh, feels like. So, it, so we were really happy at instances when they would actually wear the pieces that they made and, uh, and would just, of course, giggle around in the beginning, but later realize that it was serious business. When we showcased this collection and when this was uh, put out in one of Delhi's best fashion boutiques, uh, the customers who came in said that they found absolutely no difference in a product that was made at a designer workshop or with the women uh, who were part of the Silai project. And that's, I think, what makes projects such as these meaningful. The collection was called Window to the World because 
this is so Pondicherry and it was inspired by the strolls that I would take uh, through the Pondicherry town. But it was also a metaphor to what the women were looking at us for and what I was looking at them for. We were both a window to each other trying to create something and trying to see new light. So when we finally did the show, we, we had the women uh, walking with me and, and I must say it was such a beautiful feeling. I mean, look at the smile on their faces because, because this is what sustainable fashion can do. This is what uh, fashion with a heart can do. It can transform people, it can transform lives. And even more so in a country like India because textiles employ the maximum number of people only after agriculture. And a little bit of love that seeps into the clothes that we make or the way we shop can make a huge difference. And why is that? Because if you look at our past, everything that was the best, that was crafted, that was well done, were made for the kings, right? But today we don't have the kings, but we have something better. We have something called the customer, and we have so many of them. And if each of the customers can choose to put their money into something that's created with love, I think that's when we're able to really make a happy corridor and a meaningful one. Thank you.